Today we're in Berkhamsted, Hertfordshire, England, and we're here to look at World War I trench remains here in England. Now you could be forgiven for questioning my knowledge when you hear me say World War I trenches in England. <laughs> um, but that's right, uh, here in Berkhamsted, like many places across um, England, uh, there were large training camps set up. Now of course there were thousands, hundreds of thousands of men who went out to fight in the Great War from England and they had to be trained. Uh, and Berkhamsted, like many places, was used as a training ground, specifically Berkhamsted in Hertfordshire, um, a little bit northwest of London, was the home of the Inns of Court Officers Training Corps and from September 1914 through to 1919 here at Berkhamsted Station more than 12,000 men would pour off the trains here into the training camps. Now today we're going to spend a bit of time having a look around, uh, looking at where the training camp was, looking at where the parade ground was and most importantly looking at the remains of some of the World War One training trenches that are still here at Berkhamsted Common. So as I said, we are outside Berkhamsted Station and literally right across from the station here um, over in this direction uh, is where the camp would have been set up. Now, this area has been redeveloped slightly since that stage, um, but over here was a large green where there was a giant um, kind of tent uh, encampment where a lot of these guys would have been. So the station is just at the other end of this path here um, and where this comes through. So this road was, was built and developed since the Great War but this area here um, is where the large tent encampment would have been. I've got some odd photos I'm going to share into the um, video but this is where those guys would have been. Now just at the end of the road over there you guys might better see those kind of brick um, sort of stone remains. Well those are the remains of Berkhamsted Castle uh, and just in front of that off to our left hand side um, is a large open space that was used as the parade ground for the guys who were training here. So I've just walked up a um, short distance from the station um, to, to here. Um, this is now a large um, playing field. Uh, and interestingly, it's now called Kitchener's Field. Uh, of course, named after Lord Kitchener, um, Field Marshal Kitchener, um, who is the guy, uh, the famous guy on the poster pointing, and you know, your country needs you. Uh, so, so the field here um, was used uh, for, for drilling, a parade ground, uh, and also some, some camping here um, for the, the guys who trained here. Now, um, very originally, um, the Northumberland Fusiliers were based here, um, but then it became the kind of permanent home through the course of the Great War um, for the uh, Inns of Court Regiment um, based here at Berkhamsted. Now, uh, of course, you can imagine a large area like this would have been needed, um, you know, to, to drill these guys, you know, um, you know, parade them, get them organised. Uh, a lot of these guys would have been volunteers who had, um, you know, put themselves forwards uh, as, as thousands and thousands of men did in 1914, but would have had very little um, military background if if any at all and so they had to be trained organized uh, and and this is where that happened you know it's crazy to think here that we are uh, walking in the footsteps of, of thousands of men who went on um, to the Great War sadly not all of them would would come back from here we're going to move just slightly further along kind of this direction uh, further into the common uh, to look at something which is going to be really interesting but first we're going to head to the war memorial um, just slightly further up the hill. Now we've just walked a little bit further up into the um, uh, common um, and up here they have the uh, war memorial here by Berkhamsted which uh, directly references the guys who trained here. We're going to look at the trenches in a second um, but I thought it's important to stop here and have a look at this first. So I'm just checking out the uh, memorial here and um, rather than you guys trying to read it I'll read it to you. It says uh, in memory of the Inns of Court Officers Training Corps who in this neighbourhood trained over 12,000 men to serve as commissioned officers in the Great War 1914 to 1918. 
Now, something which is which is important to note is, of course, as we said, not not all of those twelve thousand men came back, and it goes on to uh, to say, uh, and in affectionate remembrance of the two thousand who gave their lives for their country, this monument is erected by members and friends of the corps. Wow. So in 1914, by the time the um, Western Front lines had been established across France and there were a line of trenches running all the way from the coast up by Belgium right the way down through to the mountains in Switzerland, southeast um, of France, um, it, it was very apparent that trench warfare was going to be a key aspect of the Great War. And as such, it meant that the men had to be trained um, in trenches, not just how to live in them, but how to build them, how they were designed and of course the guys training here at Berkhamsted also needed a great deal of physical training and physical exercise well what better way to combine the both other than digging a whole network of training trenches and that's where we are right now here on Berkhamsted Common the main thing that we have come to look at today so when you arrive on this site here, they have this um, really cool information board which talks about the um, Inns of Court uh, Officers Training Corps, um, the Devil Zone they were nicknamed. Um, and this is really cool. You can see, first of all, they've got like a map of, of where we are and you can see the actual trench network is quite extensive. Now it's, it's very overgrown as you can, you can see over here, but I'm going to try and have a look through as much of it as I possibly can, of, of course. Some other cool photos, some photos of the guys here training and and actually digging some of these trenches, which I'm, I'm gonna get some of these photos and include them in the video, but the Devil's Own training area and, and a whole network of training trenches here at Berkhamsted. Right, no more messing around, let's do this. Let's get into these and see how much we can explore. Now, one of the things which you notice straight away here is the trenches aren't straight. Now, we've talked about that before. Um, when we were at Vimy Ridge, I think we talked about it specifically, uh, about the reason why they're not straight, and a couple of reasons. First of all, if we actually get down into this trench, right, now they're actually down into this trench, you can start to get the idea. And, of course, these were training trenches, right? So these guys never actually came under um, real artillery fire here. But the idea of these not being straight was that if there was, um, let's say, an artillery shell came into a trench over here and, of course, sends the blast this way, it's not going to get round this corner to then the trench going in that direction. Um, that was to try to minimise casualties. Of course, the other reason was if, if a section of a trench was captured, so let's say this section of trench was captured, there's then a corner and the guys don't have a clear line of fire to be able to fire straight down this trench here, taking out more and more uh, bridge casualties. Now, just by the trenches here, this bench. Now, as soon as I saw a bench with a plaque, I figured it might have something to, to, to do with the Great War, but I didn't realise just how, how linked in this was going to be. So here we have a bench with a plaque, which is uh, in memory of 2nd Lieutenant John Graham Goffey, 17th Battalion, King's Royal Ra Rifles, trained in these trenches and killed in action at Beaumont Hamill at the Somme, a place that we're very familiar with, right? We've been to Beaumont Hamill a couple of times on this channel. And here we have a photo of 2nd Lieutenant John Graham Goffey. Wow. It does bring home to you the fact that we talked about the fact that 12,000 men were trained here and a huge chunk of them did not make it home from the Great War. For some of them, this would have been their, their last home in England, Berkhamsted. Now we've just come further into the... Uh, kind of network here of trenches that they have and of course they're they're you know look they're overgrown and they're partly filled in and they're they're nothing like they would have been during the course of 1914 to 1919 but you really still get a, a really good idea of what they've done here you can see it's a whole kind of network i've tried to from the map at the front i the best i can work out is i think they've built like a frontline trench over here these are communication trenches going through and then I think this would have been like a support line trench and again communication trenches going further back um, to the to the rear 
So, of course, these were, you know, these weren't dug for fun. This was a, a training exercise to teach these guys how to build a trench network, how to build them properly, how to dig them deep enough. You can imagine this would have been some tough, tough work digging these out. Oh, we've got a deeper piece goes down in here. A piece that uh, maybe almost looks like, in fact, someone's had like a fire or something down there. So maybe it looks like perhaps someone's tried to kind of dig it back out a little bit. But you can see this goes this goes all through and, and over here, but look, we're not done looking around yet. Let's, uh, let's keep going. So we've come round a bit further now. I guess um, if we're saying that the imaginary front line was where I was to start with, where that sign was, then we are kind of now on the, um, the left flank of, of where that was here. And this side, the, uh, the trenches are actually deeper. You can see this one running away behind me and then there's another one this way that goes back towards what, what was the, the front line, or at least what I think would have been the imaginary front line. This is such a cool site, this really is. I didn't know this was here um, until a couple of months ago. Um, it's only about an hour away from where I live, and I've been meaning to come here for a while, so I'm so glad I did today. So we're along that trench that I just uh, talked about, and that goes down there, and then actually it just kind of disappears into the undergrowth. So um, along... Uh, like kind of over this direction um, is now a golf course so I think this would have probably been a bit bigger and carried on through but but look I I, I get it right the the world moves on in some ways and as as much as it's a shame um, that there's not loads and loads of miles of these of course I, I get it some of it has been redeveloped um, to to become the golf course I believe I read online that all in all there were 13 miles of trench network dug here so this piece that we're looking at really is just a small section compared to um, everything that there was. And if you ever do visit here and you're a World War One enthusiast I, I highly recommend visiting here but it's it's worth exploring away from just kind of that main area where we were there because I've gone out into sort of some of the the shrubbery I suppose and there are other little remains there's like a kind of a dip over here that definitely looks like it was dug out at one point there's a piece here that's a bit more obvious it's almost like a, a path but you can tell it is because it eventually leads down there into the actual trench network that we were looking at so it's worth getting off the beaten track even in here I can see like dips and stuff that I imagine were part of it but I made the mistake of wearing shorts <laughs> So I don't intend on delving into undergrowth quite that thick today. <laughs> So it seems fitting that we end this video walking back through the uh, the trench lines back towards where the front line was. Literally walking in the footsteps of 12,000 men who went from here out to France and other theatres of war to fight in the Great War. And as we've said, many of them, nearly half of them were, were wounded and uh, more than 2,000 of them did not make it back home again. And we're walking in the footsteps of those men right now here at Berkhamsted in England. I really recommend coming here if you get the chance. It's a great spot to, to have a look around and see um, some trenches without travelling out to France. They really do look like frontline trenches I've seen out on the Western Front. So it's well worth checking out. If you guys enjoyed the video, do me a favour, hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Consider checking out my Patreon page if you enjoy the content that I'm making here. I'm getting back out to the, the Western Front again soon. Um, something a little bit different. We're going to Verdun and some other cool places. So we're going to be talking all about uh, Verdun and some of the American sector. Muse are gone. Really looking forward to those trips. Uh, I want to carry on making the, the content and making the videos. So if you do fancy supporting me, check out the Patreon page. In the meantime, guys, thanks for watching. I'm going to see you on the next one.